This is Apostle Calvin Brown, Christ Be Glorified Ministries, and welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. God's kingdom. Amen. Everyone that is born again is supposed to be a part of the kingdom of God. And everyone that is born again is supposed to have spiritual sight. In, in other words, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to be circumspect, to walk wisely, to have our eyes wide open to know how to operate in the kingdom of God, to see what is, what is coming, amen, to, to know what God's will is from heaven and also to thwart the attacks of the devil whom we have power over as we operate in the kingdom of God, amen. And so turn with me to the book of James, the book of James, And we'll look at verses 17 and 18. We're going to look at a perspective of the kingdom of God. Amen. James chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. So he's talking about God's wisdom. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. That means not defiled, not corrupted, okay? Then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The fruit of righteousness sown in peace by those who make peace. So, the result of the gospel, if you think about the gospel, amen, the good news, the preaching of the gospel, the result of the gospel is fruit. And that fruit is righteousness. It is peace. Amen. So what does the gospel do? You preach the gospel and people are born again, but the gospel is good news. So the gospel also addresses any sort of shortage, any short, any sort of disadvantage, any sort of anything that would come against us from the devil. The thief comes not but to steal, kill, and to destroy. So God gives good news that we have overcome the world. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. Faith, it brings in the reality of righteousness, the things that are highlighted, that are illuminated in heaven, are brought into this earth realm. The reality that we are actually citizens of heaven. Amen. And we bring that truth and that reality in this earth realm through the Lordship of Jesus Christ and through manifestation by the power of the Holy Spirit acting on the Word of God, causing the Word of God, which is true, to appear or to manifest that is true. So the result of the gospel is fruit, righteousness, and peace. Amen. And so that is what is also uh, said about the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not of food or drink, but it is righteousness. It is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Joy is Produced when the harvest comes in, joy is produced. When the baby is born, joy is produced. When the answer is received, joy is, is produced. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the, the gospel brings peace between God and man, those who receive it. Amen. The gospel brings peace. In Matthew, let's look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. Matthew chapter 12, verse 30. This is Jesus speaking. The words in red. He who is not with me is against me, and 
he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Amen. And so you are either with Jesus or you are against him. You know, we, we like people like this, this middle of the road, you know, people like this gray area, but there's in the, in the kingdom, there's no gray area. In the gospel, there's no gray area. Jesus says that those who are not with me, what does that mean? Those who are not one with me are against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters. So Jesus is gathering. Amen. That you, you think of gathering, you think of the sheep. They are the sheep are gathered. Every sheep that is scattered is brought into a fold. Amen. You also gather the sheep and you gather in the harvest. Amen. So that's what Jesus is talking about. That he is gathering. But everyone that is not with him, gathering with him, is scattering the sheep and is scattering the harvest. In other words, prohibiting, keeping the, the sheaves from being bundled, keeping the, 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 the corn or the wheat from being gathered into the barn. Amen. So they are in a front to the gospel. Amen. So what does the Lord want to do? He wants to gather the sheep. He wants to gather the harvest into the barn. Amen. That, that which is uh, um, of the Lord. Amen. To be, to be brought, to be born again. Amen. To be brought into, into heaven. Amen. And so the purpose of the gospel is to produce righteousness, a harvest of righteousness. What is right? And the purpose of the gospel is to produce peace with God. Amen. And the purpose of the gospel is to bring in the harvest. Amen. And so in Matthew, again, chapter 10 Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 through 39. Amen. That we, we're talking about who's on the Lord's side and how do you show that you're on the Lord's side? There's a test. There's an easy way to know whether you're on the Lord's side. Amen. If you're on the Lord's side, you're one with him. You have his heart for gathering Amen. The sheep gathering the harvest and you don't let anything get in the way. Amen. Of that. You don't let anything stand between you and the Lord. You're one. You're one with the Lord. Verse 32 in Matthew chapter 10. Amen. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my father who is in heaven, but whoever denies me before men, him I will deny before my father who is in heaven. <clears throat> and so we are required to confess Jesus before men. Amen. Why? Because men in this earth are in two categories. They either belong to God, they're either with God, or, or they are against the Lord, or they don't belong to the Lord yet. Amen. This, this is not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. And so the peer pressure, you don't let men keep you from confessing Jesus. You show that you're with Jesus, that you're part of heaven. You're part of the will of heaven, the plan of heaven, the will of God, the plan of God from, from heaven. So whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Then verse 34, do not think that I came to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I've come to set man against his father, daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law 
against her mother-in-law and a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And he who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Amen. And so Jesus says, you have to love me more than any sort of um, relationship, family relationship. You know, people, ministers are afraid, you know, to preach these types of scriptures strongly because they do not have understanding of what Jesus said. You got to take all the scripture in context that confessing me before men, if you're, if you're not willing to confess me and, and confessing the Lord is your testimony. Amen. Amen. Confessing the Lord is how you got saved and it is your testimony Amen. That he, the Lord Jesus, is your Lord and he rules your heart. Amen. And so he is above all, even above family members. So Jesus used this on purpose to, to show people where their heart is. And the Lord would always do this. He will always use his word to show you where your, where your heart is. Amen. And so you must Confess the Lord before men. And then he says, don't think that I come to bring peace, but a sword. Amen. And so you may say, apostle, I thought you just said the gospel bring peace. It does. The gospel is called the gospel of peace. Peace with God. Amen. So there is a distinction of those who have accepted the Lord and have come to peace with the Lord. That means you are at war against the kingdom of the Satan, the kingdom of darkness. Amen. And so the gospel brings peace, but it also provokes war because in this earth realm, Jesus must be Lord just the way that he is in heaven. Amen. And so that's what the gospel does, that we who, who preach the gospel, who operate in the kingdom, we are bringing people to peace with God. Amen. And also we are picking up the sword against the devil's kingdom. Amen. And so a family can be divided. It can be divided between those who belong to the Lord, who are with the Lord, who gather with the Lord and those who are not saved. And so the sword is called the sword of righteousness. Amen. The Bible talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. It is a sword which brings righteousness. It is a sword which brings justice. It is violent against the forces of darkness. So when a person is born again, that is violence against the devil's kingdom. Amen. When a person is brought into the kingdom of God, that was against the devil's kingdom. You understand? So the, the same gospel, which brings peace, also brings war. Amen. Or it highlights that there is a war because the devil, amen, is, is in this earth realm trying to beguile, trying to deceive mankind from accepting Jesus as Lord. Amen. And so as a, as a believer, this thing is very serious. You're not passive about this. Amen. You're not on the sidelines about this. You are in the war. You're in the battle because you're born again. And you're, you're with, you say that you're with Jesus. And you're called to gather and not scatter. And you are one with him. So you're in war. Amen. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. By the pulling down of strongholds, casting down of imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
and rulers of darkness. Amen. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. You're in a war. Because you're in a kingdom and there's a kingdom arrayed against you. Somebody in, in the kingdom, amen, has to stand up against the kingdom of Satan. Satan is trying to keep people from being saved, which means that they will go to hell. Or he's trying to wipe people out to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he uses lies. Amen. He was a liar from the beginning. Amen. And so if your eyes were open to the kingdom, you would know that you were at war. Amen. If you knew that you were at war, you would take full advantage of everything that God has given you to be victorious. Because in Christ Jesus, we are victorious. Amen. And so the question is, whose side are you on and how do you show? How do you show that you're on the Lord's side? Amen. Where's your, where's your heart? Amen. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. What you treasure. Amen. By what, showing what you treasure will show whose side you're on. Now, there are many Christians who profess to loving the Lord. Amen. But they don't know that you have to love the Lord more than anything. And so if you were to check the boxes, there are things that they love, people that they love more than the Lord, because they put those things or those people before the Lord. OK, let's it says, for I've come to set man against his father and daughter against her mother, daughter in law against her mother in law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father. Listen to this, verse 37. He who loves father, a mother more than me, is not worthy of me. Amen. It says, <clears throat> verse 38, and he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. So there's something that you've got to do. Amen. That Jesus died on a cross. Amen. When he's talking about us taking up our cross, it is it is taking up our part amen, in the kingdom to to spread the gospel message, to get the gospel out, to be willing to suffer whatever we need to suffer to put Jesus first, that Jesus is first. He who finds his life will lose it and he who loses his life for my sake We'll find it. Amen. So if you're trying to have life, amen, but you're not putting Jesus first, if you're not loving Jesus more than anything, you're actually losing life. Those pursuits, those things that you're going after is vanity. It's causing you to lose life. You, you're in danger of your soul going to hell, losing your soul. Soul is, is your life. It's a combination it's the soul is like the seat of, of life. Amen. It's connected to the heart. So many times, you know, it says heart or spirit and soul. The heart is the spirit, spirit and soul, the, the, the seat of life. But the soul is where you choose life, where you have enough sense. <laughs> you get sense from the word of God. Amen. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed, the Bible says, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So you have sense to choose life. It would be foolish for you to reject life. Jesus is life. It would be foolish for you to choose someone above Jesus. Amen. That your soul would not be saved, you understand. And the Lord came to save your soul. So that you can think right, so that you can, you can choose what God has prepared, prepared for you. Amen. And so being gathered also means that we are gathered as a military host. We are part of the host. Amen. There is a host in heaven. Jesus is the Lord of hosts. Amen. And so those Believers on this earth that are aware, 
that greater are they that are with the Lord or that are with us than they that are with them, that, that our eyes are wide open. Amen. And that we're willing to lay down our lives. That means we're willing to fight for the gospel, for the gospel's sake and for his name's sake. That we are part of that heavenly host also. Amen. That war to get and we get victory because Jesus, Jesus has given us the victory. So the question is, who's on the Lord's side? Amen. And how can we tell who's on the Lord's side? Well, I'll, I'll begin to answer that. Let's, let's go to Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 24. Psalms chapter 24, verse 1. It says, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell in it. Amen. So how, do you, how can you tell if you're on the Lord's side? Well, you'll have to answer the question of who owns everything. Amen. If you can answer the question of who owns everything, the Bible says the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. So it's settled. The earth belongs to God because he created it. Amen. I'll show you that he leased it to man. I'll show you that. But it still belongs to him. There's a difference between ownership and those who are leasees or those who it is leased unto. Amen. If, if, <laughs> if you lease an apartment, amen. You can't say, well, this, this is my apartment and don't pay any rent and, and disregard, <laughs> hey man, the, the owner of the, of the apartment complex. You, you can't do that, <laughs> hey man, because there's a such thing as ownership, which trumps, <laughs> hey man, those that lease, hey amen, ownership, it trumps leasing. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness. Fullness means everything of the earth, everything that's in it, everything that fills it up. So the earth is the Lord's. The, the world, a little different connotation. It, it means also the people, but it says that the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof. And it says, and the those who dwell in it. So world and earth, world is talking about all that dwells in the earth. So the world is, is the earth, amen, the land masses, the mountains, the waters, and all the people and all the animals and everything that, that dwells in this earth, amen. And Psalms 100 In Psalms 100, verse 3. Psalms 100, verse 3. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Amen. So we are um, reemphasizing that the people belong to God. Every soul, the Bible says every soul belongs to God. That is saved souls and unsaved souls. Amen. God speaks to Jesus and says that I will give you the heathen for your inheritance. Amen. So if you're not even saved yet, you still belong to the Lord Jesus. God has given you to Jesus as his, his inheritance. Why? Because Jesus inherited the whole earth. When Jesus went to the cross, he did the job that Adam failed. So he was the rightful heir of the earth. And so whether you know it or not, every person on this earth belongs to Jesus as an inheritance. Amen. And God has given Jesus every person. And yet we have to make that choice. So there is a sword at play, a sword of righteousness, which are bringing people into 
the kingdom of God, thus making peace. You were at war. The Bible says that you were at enmity with God in your mind. Your thinking was off. So your thinking or your soul had to be saved so that you could be at peace with God. Amen. And so that's what that original scripture, I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it one more time in James chapter three, because sometimes I just, I pass by things and uh, I don't linger on it enough, but I, I want you to get the full connotation of verse 18. Now, the fruit of righteousness, amen. So the, the purpose of the gospel is to produce fruit unto God, fruit of righteousness. Now, the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. So the, the fruit of righteousness, producing righteousness, is sown in peace by those who make peace. In other words, God has made peace. We are reconciled unto Christ. Amen. So those who have been reconciled begin to preach the gospel and begin to witness to bring others into peace. What happens? We are gathered unto Jesus we are with him and we are one with him. Amen. And so we, we, peace is being produced by those who have received peace. So the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Amen. That's what that is saying. And so how do we show that we are at peace with God? We acknowledge that the earth is the Lord's. And people belong to God. And we belong to God. Any other sentiment is saying that you're against Jesus. You're against the gospel. You're, you're against the word. Amen. We're brought at peace. Amen. So those that are at peace, we show out of our life, our behavior, amen, that we know that everything belongs to God. Why? We honor the Lord with everything. We honor the Lord with our Relationships also. Amen. We honor the Lord with everything we have and everything we are. And we honor the Lord in our relationships. Amen. Putting Jesus first and bringing others to Jesus. Amen. If there's someone in our family who is not saved, we make peace between them and the Lord by bringing them to Jesus. Amen. And we don't care if they say, I don't like this thing. I don't like this thing. I don't, you know, I'm not with that. I'm not like that. We love Jesus more. And so that's what I remember from us when demon Katarina, Mofi Riba Fadun Manakana Morema Katanya, Mofara Mosa Te Brebo Satapa. So Tanya, that's what it means. Amen. That the sword is brought to the household. Amen. Psalms chapter 50, the book of Psalms, chapter 50, Psalms chapter 50, verse 10. It says, for every beast of the forest is mine, this is God speaking, and the cattle of a thousand hills, you know, infinite. Heals is, is what that means. All the, all the beasts of the field, all the cattle belong to the Lord. Amen. So the earth is the Lord's. The people are the Lord's. The, the animals are the Lord's. Amen. And then in Haggai, the book of Haggai, Chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And this place I will give peace, said the Lord of hosts. I want you to see that connection. <laughs> he says, the silver is his and the gold is his. Amen. And because of that, the glory of the latter house or temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. So I said, we are, we are gathered also. I said, the gathering is that we are in the, the army of the Lord. We are gathered. We don't break ranks. 
Amen. We're gathered because he is the Lord of hosts and we are part of that host. Amen. And so there is a connection between the silver and the gold and the glory of the latter house. Now, a lot of people, they have mischaracterized, you know, finances and monies and silver and gold. But yes, there is a part because where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. And so we are talking about, when we're talking about souls being saved, we're talking about eternity, spending eternity with God in heaven. Eternity begins in this earth realm, but we have a commission in this earth realm, amen, to go and to bring in the harvest and to save souls, to gather the sheep, to gather the, the, the sheaves, the bundles, to, to gather the, 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 great, the harvest that is, that is representing people, the harvest, to, to be in the barn. The barn is like their names written in the Lamb's Book of Life. These are the people that will appear in heaven, that will be in heaven. So we get them saved. We keep them saved. Amen. You ministers also, you get them saved. You keep them saved. Now, I don't want to go there. But, but the Bible says your name can be blotted out of the Lamb's book of life. Amen. He said, well, that's not, don't go there. Don't say that. Well, that's not what that, don't even go there. Because the, the things that pertain to salvation don't even go there. You know, your devotion and your love for the Lord. You got saved. You love the Lord. And that love gets sweeter and better and greater. The revelation of it gets greater every day. So you're drawn more unto the Lord. Amen. You don't go away from the Lord. Amen. And so we have to preach to keep people's hearts on fire for the Lord. And we ourselves, our hearts must be on fire for the Lord. So the glory of the latter house shall be greater than that which is of the former. So the revelation, amen. The Bible says, as I live, says the Lord, the whole earth shall be filled with the glory of God. Amen. And so the glory is that which pertains to Lord, the Lord. The glory, we say, well, it's the cloud, it's the heaviness. It, it actually carries the attributes of the Lord. If you see the actual glory cloud, it carries the attributes of the Lord. If you, if you gather in the glory, you see the Lord in a sense because we're able to see him in the glory. The Bible says that we with unveiled faces as in a mirror, beholding the glory of the Lord are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Amen. And so we gather in the glory. That's, that's another aspect of the gathering. There's glory in the gathering, what the Lord has gathered. Amen. In the meetings, amen, there is, there is glory. Amen. And so what does the glory do? The glory shows the reality of righteousness. And it also sh it shows the splendor of the Lord. In other words, if you saw the Lord in the glory the way Isaiah did, you would worship the Lord. The first thing that you would do is appreciate that he is the Lord. And so you would fall and worship the Lord. And then the revelation in that glory, when you regain strength in his presence, his fullness of joy, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. As you, re, as you regain strength, then you praise. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So in the glory, you see the Lord the way that he is. And in the glory, you would see yourself the way that you are in any way that you have not given the Lord his glory. The glory would reveal it. So anything, is, it is not sin consciousness. It is magnifying the Lord and, and showing your need for the Lord, that you would have an appreciation for the Lord, that you would honor the Lord because you would see him the way that he is. And you would contrast that with yourself in your need, amen, for the Lord, simply even to be in his presence, amen. So we see the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So the earth, the world, the people, the animals, everything belongs to the Lord, the silver and the gold. And so how do you handle the, the, the earth, the world, the people? Or how you see the earth, the world, the people, how you see the silver and the gold shows 
whether or not you believe they belong to God. Amen. That's the point that I'm trying to show. That if you love this earth, then you your treasure would be in this earth, which is subject to corruption, which is subject to decay. Don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, but treasure in heaven. The Bible says, even when you are rich, to be rich toward God. Amen. Don't let your money be a witness against you. The corruption, which means that it is, it is invested in only that which is of this world. It is subject. It is subject to corruption. Amen. So the earth is the Lord's. The people are the Lord's. The silver and the gold, they belong to God. So all belong to God. Yet in the earth, there is a war in this earth for the earth. <laughs> there is a war in this world for the world or, or to, to show who owns the world. It's supposed to be settled that it belongs to God, yet there is a war in this earth for this world, for the people. Amen. Whether you know it or not, there are those who want to make you slaves. They, they want you to be subject to them. Amen. This new world order. Amen. This, this new world order. Amen. Is anti-Christ. Amen. It is against God, against the spirit of God. And so all that belongs to God, this new world order is trying to um, gather to themselves. Amen. They're trying to own the world. They're trying to own the people. They're actually trying to own the, the crops and the animals. Amen. And they are trying to own the silver and the gold and make everything else subject to them. Amen. So man is futile in his attempts against God because in the end, everything has to be deployed to fill his temple with the glory. So the purpose of the money is for the kingdom of God. Amen. That's why the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. What things? I think I need to just address that a little bit. Uh, Jesus is speaking in Matthew chapter six. Amen. And, and he says that these things the Gentiles seek after. Where, what I'm going to eat. Amen. And that's what the devil is trying to manipulate. Amen. To control the food supply. What, what am I going to wear? The devil is, is in the, the, the clothing industry trying to, to manipulate that. Amen. Uh, how, what am I going to drink? How am I going to be clothed? And, and, and actually like, where am I going to stay? Amen. Where am I going to stay? Amen. He says, all these things the Gentiles seek after. Amen. And so he says, to seek you first. Verse 33, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things will be added. Why? Because if the devil could control these things, he could control people. Because people don't love, many people don't love Jesus above all these things. And if you don't love Jesus above all these things, then you can be manipulated. Amen. You can be controlled. Amen. And the devil will pull you away from the Lord to cause you, Lord, what is the word? To, to renounce God and to be subject to that antichrist spirit for your sustenance. Amen. And so that's where that is going. And so that's why your heart, you have to be established in the Lord, not in meats, <laughs> amen, not in food. Your heart must be established in righteousness, amen. So everything belongs to God. I told you I will um, give you that verse also where God leased it out unto man in Psalms 115. The book of Psalms. 115. Verse 16. 
It says the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Amen. And so that word given is actually least. So heaven belongs to God. The Bible says heaven is the Lord and the earth is his footstool or serves his purposes. The earth is supposed to serve the Lord's purposes, but it's also supposed to be in submission, footstool. That Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting till his enemies be made his footstool. Amen. And so the earth serves the Lord when we put the devil under our feet. Amen. Jesus already defeated the devil. Now he is waiting for us to rule over the devil. Same thing that the God did with Adam. They threw Satan Lucifer out of heaven and then Adam was supposed to rule over him and kick him out in this earth. But because he did it, the devil, because of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that there is a evil for every good, that, that it is allowed, that there is a, a evil choice and, and a good choice. Amen. That's what the eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So we put evil on the same plane as good. And so the devil is using time. His time is short. He's using time to try to subvert, amen, God's plan for the earth. Amen. What is the earth? The earth is supposed to honor the Lord. The heaven belongs to the Lord. The earth is his footstool. Amen. It's, it's where he is at rest. The Lord is at rest. We're supposed to enter into the rest that the Lord has already worked. That's what our faith will do. Amen. As we receive answers from God, we put the devil under our feet. Amen. And so we reign and rule. Amen. So God has no ha ha ha. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The, the Lord has Holy Ghost. Whoo. Ha ha. The, the Lord has um, no problem, hallelujah, with you, you having stuff and things as long as the principal part is to honor him. Amen. He has given you freely all things to enjoy. Amen. He's given you all things, but inheritance is found in Christ Jesus, the one who obeyed God. Inheritance is found in Christ Jesus, the one who obeyed God. For, for you to get credit for obeying God, you, you have to operate by faith, Jesus' faith, to get Jesus' results, which honors Jesus and honors the Father God. So you cannot say, well, everything is mine. I just take it unto myself. God said I could have it. You know, it's, it's mine. No, it must honor the Lord. In this earth realm, there is a hostile spirit. There is a spirit of rebellion. You have to show in every instance that you are not a part of that hostile spirit against God, that spirit of rebellion. So you can show if you belong to God. You can show if you're on the Lord's, Lord's side. You can show if you are gathering. Amen. You can show if, if you are at peace with God. Amen. That you are a seed of that peace. Amen. And that you bring other folks into peace with God. Amen. So the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to those who make peace. Amen. So you, you can show whether or not you believe that the earth is the Lord's. You can show whether you believe that the silver and the gold is the Lord's. Amen. That you're just a steward. Amen. That, that you are leasing what the Lord put in your hand. Amen. And that is the way of the kingdom. Amen. For you to be faithful with what God has put in your hand. Everything is to honor the Lord. Amen. You honor the Father God by honoring the Lord Jesus. Amen. God has given to his people the best to honor him. Amen. So God has given unto his people. So it's not about the devil's crowd. God takes from the devil crowd. Amen. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. 
So in this earth realm, if you become a part of God's kingdom with Jesus gathering, then God, he removes from the wicked and gives to the just. So that's what you will see as God's people walk in the revelation of it. You will see it more and more because these are the last days. Amen. It's not about being, what is it, gold fever. It's, it's, it's not about having an attitude. Oh, I want to be rich. Oh, I want to be rich. I want to be rich. I want to be rich. Amen. It is about having a vision of the harvest. Jesus says this. He says to look up. He says, don't say in four months is going to be a harvest. He said, look up. In other words, spiritually, the word look up is look to God spiritually or a vision. Amen. To be able to see beyond where you are. You're right here. Jesus says, look up. He says that the fields are already white for the harvest. Look up. Amen. Your redemption draweth near. Every time the Lord says, look up, it's because you're looking down. Amen. So spiritually speaking, amen, it is, it is not about, so many people have been deceived and, and we kind of came up in this, you know, full gospel, Pentecostal, charismatic, you know, we are non-denomination, don't, don't put us with anything like that. But I'm saying, but we came up in that thing where the emphasis was on the money, amen. And, and truly, if, if you know the heart of God, he, he wants nothing more than to put the money in the hands of those people that look up, that have a vision of the harvest. Amen. To have a vision of the will of God in this earth realm. But most people put the other thing first. They put that which is not first first. They put the money first or they put their family first. Amen. They don't, they don't put Jesus first. And let that minister peace into those other areas. Peace to your house. How are you going to have peace? <laughs> somebody hates Jesus. Somebody, somebody loves Jesus. How are you going to have peace? Well, the one that loves Jesus cannot come on the side of the one that hates Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That's not how you make peace. Amen. How can everybody be happy? Amen. If that person that hates Jesus has a road, a road of Damascus experience, <laughs> holy ghost, an encounter with the glory. That's what that means. Amen. Ay, ay, The gospel of glory. Oh, Ooh, hallelujah. I don't want to preach words. Amen. I want the glory of God to be manifested. I want you to be arrested. <laughs> Amen. I want you to fall to your knees and acknowledge that Jesus is Lord. Now I can deal with you as a brother. Now I can deal with you as a sister. Amen. I'm not going to try to be one with you. I'm not going to compare uh, tattoos. I don't have tattoos. <laughs> to, to, to get you to be interested in me and be on my side. Amen. I'm not going to compare. Amen. Sin. Holy Ghost. To get you to be on my side. Amen. Praise God, the, the sword. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace, but a sword. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man's foes will be those in his own household, that they will be at variance against each other until the sword has its perfect work. Amen. Now, the, the, here's a revelation, and, and I meditate on this revelation in, at some point every day. The Lord promises that your whole household shall be saved. Amen. You said that ain't no problem. It, it has to be a revelation. Amen. Because the devil can try to get in your house and it can be an awful thing. You, you must know that God promised to save the whole household. Amen. The Passover lamb was for a house. If a, lamb, if a house is too small, mm -hmm. that you, it can include another house. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rahab, she she put the scarlet cord, the thread that from her window, and her whole household was saved. Amen. The, the Philippian jailer, amen, his whole household was saved. Cornelius, 
his whole household was saved. So the promise was for him and his house. The promise was for him. We need somebody in the house, <laughs> amen, to get saved. And the Lord will save, will save the household, amen. There, there are other examples all through the word of God where God saved the whole household, amen. And so that, that is the promise. The sword is working salvation for the house. Amen. And so those who know that the earth is the Lord's, the silver and the gold is the Lord's, then they know if it's the Lord's, then I'm just a steward. And so I receive that which is of the Lord and I receive increase by employing those things in the kingdom of God. Amen. And so you can make peace with your family, you can make peace with your monies. <laughs> Amen. It doesn't have to be like it's going out of, 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 of something with a hole in it. You can make peace with your money by employing it into the kingdom of God. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, 1 through 4. It says, now let me sing to my well-beloved a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. God's beloved is his, is his people. So this is, is like a poem or a song, God says, let me sing a song to my well below my people, a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard. My well beloved has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones and planted it with the choicest vine. It says he built a tower in the midst and he also made a wine press in it. So he expected it to bring forth good grapes, but it brought forth wild grapes. Amen. So this, this is the Lord's song of, about his vineyard. Let me get that straight. That is the Lord's song. Amen. About his vineyard. It's like God singing the song to, to Jesus. Amen. So let me sing a song of my well beloved, a song of my beloved regarding his vineyard, the Lord's vineyard. My well beloved and has a vineyard on a very fruitful hill. He dug it up and cleared out its stones. He planted it with the choicest vine. He built a tower in the midst and he made a wine press in it. So he, he expected it to bring forth good grace, but it brought forth wild grapes. And now we inhabit, inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge please between me and my vineyard. What more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? So good grapes, domesticated grapes, amen. Wild grapes is, is that like, um, that, that is not even domesticated. So it's the difference between um, wild means that without the spirit of God, amen. And good grapes would be that under the influence of the Spirit of God. Amen. So wild grapes means that he planted the grapes in the earth. He planted the vineyard in the earth. And the, it became tainted. His people became tainted by the Spirit of the world. Amen. That's what he, that's what he says. And so he says that you, you're supposed to be his people, you're supposed to show whose side you're on, but they came under the influence of the world and produced wild grapes. Now, this parable of the vineyard is part and parcel of just about every parable that Jesus gave in the Bible. Every parable, just about every parable is about the Lord giving and what he expected to return from the ones that he had given unto, whether they were a faithful steward, amen, over that which the Lord has given, or the Lord gave 
possession of, or the Lord gave rulership of. Amen. So the, the Lord leased the vineyard. The Lord leased this earth. The harvest is supposed to be righteousness and peace with God. Amen. And yet it produced the spirit of the world, looked just like the world, acted like the world. Amen. It goes on to say that he would tear that down. He'd tear the walls and the tower and all that stuff, all that stuff, that he would tear that down because it was not producing, it was not producing fruit unto him. So devotion to God is produced by the Holy Spirit, abiding in the word. How do you abide by the Holy Spirit? How do you live or dwell or continue in the word? It's by the power of the Holy Spirit, giving you the revelation of the word and you living out of revelation. You have to live out of a revelation. That's where your strength is. Somebody tell you something, you don't have a revelation of it. You try to do it. It lasts for a while. And then the things of this world, the enemy causes you to fall off. Amen. Because it's not a revelation. You can do New Year's resolution, but you don't have a New Year's revelation. <laughs> Amen. So you don't have the strength to do it. It is the revelation when God speaks a thing. That's, that's what revelation is. When God speaks a thing and you heed it or you hear it and acknowledge it, the strength for you to do that thing is in the words that God spoke. So the word would have to speak. If the word says, thou Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. If you don't have a revelation that the word says that you are a mighty man of valor, then you can't walk in it. But once he gets a revelation of that thing, that the battle belongs to God, his valor is tied to God. Our fruitfulness is tied to God. Amen. So we can do what God says we can do because we are connected to him to produce fruit unto him, not wild grapes. If you mimic the world, it will be wild grapes. And he, will, he can't do anything with that fruit because that is not the fruit of righteousness. Amen. One, one last scripture. Amen. Let me see. Mark chapter 12. The book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 17. And Jesus answered and said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. So God left it up to you. I, I didn't catch this at first. You know, all things belong to God. Somebody says, well, there are some things, you know, like taxes and stuff that belong to Caesar. But the revelation is, a, is an overarching revelation. He says, if, if you know that everything belongs to God, that affects how you give to everything else. I'm not saying don't pay your taxes. I'm saying if you think Caesar is in charge, you, you would give to Caesar. But if you think that God owns everything, then you would honor the Lord. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Well, the thing that belonged to Caesar would get less and less the more revelation you have that everything belongs to God. Amen. You would operate out of the wisdom of God. The Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance, with the first fruit of all your increase. Amen. So everything that you have belongs to God. It is So you honor the Lord with your substance, the things that you have. And then he fine tunes it and says, with the first fruit of your increase, Proverbs 3, 9, I believe. And so does the spirit of the world, when, I, when I'm talking about, I'm not just talking about Caesar being government. I'm talking about the new world order. I'm talking about Rome. Amen. I'm talking about that, that, that spirit of the world. Amen. That new world order. Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but to God the things that are God's. The, 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 the wisdom in this that, that teaches. I mean, everyone at that time, they was trying to trap Jesus. They brought, they, they, they said, Is, was it right to pay taxes to Caesar's? And he said, bring me a coin. Amen. He says, whose image is on the coin? They said, Caesar. He says, 
Therefore, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God. Two kingdoms. What am I trying to show? Two kingdoms. What kingdom are you of? Amen. Jesus says, those that are not with me are against me. And those who don't gather with him, they scatter abroad. Amen. That, that wisdom, amen. In other words, spiritual sight and insight produces wisdom, amen, so that your heart can be devoted, amen. Revelation, spiritual sight produces wisdom, the wisdom that is associated with God's kingdom, amen, which is given by the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of wisdom, the Bible says, amen. And so what is this message? The, this message is render unto the Lord the things that belong to God. What belongs to God? Everything. Amen. And so how do we know our affection for Jesus? Amen. It's one thing to be religious, to say that I love the Lord. The kingdom of God is based on the honor of Jesus, loving Jesus more than anything so that everything would be reconciled unto Jesus. Okay, our money's reconciled unto Jesus. Our family is reconciled unto Jesus. Every relationship is reconciled unto Jesus. Our possessions are reconciled unto Jesus. Brought at peace with the Lord. If you are at peace with God, you are at peace with heaven. If you are at peace with heaven, you are part of that kingdom that heaven represents and that kingdom is against the kingdom of darkness. So, Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. For the opportunity to choose righteousness. For the opportunity to choose your wisdom. Amen. I thank you, Lord God. There will be fruit with that choice. If we choose the right thing and move in that direction, there will be fruits of righteousness. There will be peace and joy. Amen. There will be a reconciliation. There will be a coming to Jesus. Amen. That coming to Jesus is more important than agreeing with that which is not with Jesus. Amen. If, if that is the honor, honored place and statement in your heart, in your household, then the Lord will bring everything unto himself. The, the Bible says, there is a working whereby Jesus is able to subdue everything unto himself. Thank you, Father, for that word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.